Hello everyone, welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the 14th lesson on meteorology. We're going to be discussing thunderstorms. There are three meteorological requirements for the development of thunderstorms. The first is moisture. Uh, we can't have thunderstorms when the air is dry. We need unstable air and we need lifting action to move the moisture, the water droplets to high altitudes. There are three stages in the development of a thunderstorm. The first is the cumulus, the second is the mature, and the third is dissipating. The first stage, the cumulus stage, we have updraft uh, that begin and form towering cumulus clouds. So remember, that would mean that the air is unstable. It would mean that the lapse rate is greater than the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And then there's moisture uh, in the air as well. As the moisture reaches the freezing level, ice crystals form initiating rain. The second stage of thunderstorm development is the mature stage. The mature stage, we have a cumulonimbus cloud with updrafts, downdrafts, rain, hail, lightning, and roll clouds. The last stage in the thunderstorm cycle is the dissipating. Uh, dissipating is when the thunderstorm has run out of uh, energy, it's run out of moisture, and then during the dissipating stage, there are predominantly downdraft. You can see on this uh, picture on the right, the three different stages, towering cumulus, the mature stage is kind of when you get these big towering cumulus and cumulonimbus type clouds, and then the dissipating stage. You still have the cumulonimbus, but it looks a lot smoother than it did during the mature stage. Here's a fantastic uh, image of how a thunderstorm looks like. I'll just uh, point out some key features here. So first off, we see this anvil up here. Okay, this anvil, and uh, that is caused by the air uh, or the, the cloud rising up to the jet stream level and then the jet stream uh, pushing the cloud. And this is also the direction that this this whole storm is going. Uh, we have in behind, we have this flank uh, downdraft, these clouds here. Up in the head, we have light rain, moderate rain, and heavy rain. We have heavy downdrafts here. Try this, there we go. Heavy downdrafts right here associated with hail. Sometimes you might get a rotating updraft, also called a mesocyclone, uh, with a tornado right here. That would be a very bad uh, thunderstorms. So as you can see here, here's the uh, low level or the upper level jet stream pushing this anvil along. Uh, if you look at it from the top here, this is the direction of motion right here. Okay. Then up ahead, here's this anvil all the way over here. You can see it's very dangerous to be flying even under the anvil. You don't want to be doing that. And then you kind of have these updrafts and downdrafts and then a gust front up ahead here. I'll just show on the lower one. Here you'd end up with a gust front right here. So it might be nice weather. So you're taking off right here. Oh yeah, it looks kind of nice. Then you get here, it's just absolutely terrible. There are a number of different types of thunderstorms, six uh, to be exact. The first one we're going to talk about is the frontal thunderstorm. These uh, different types of thunderstorms are uh, classified based on their lifting action. So a frontal thunderstorm in a cold front, it provides the lifting action initiating the formation. So remember a cold front, we have cold air right here. There we go, pushing itself under uh, warm air, forcing the warm air up as the cold front advances this way. And uh, this will create the instability and the lifting action uh, to create a thunderstorm. You can also have a squall line. A squall line is uh, typically 100 to 200 nautical miles ahead of a cool front. It's the fastest moving type of uh, thunderstorm. Thirdly, we have an air mass thunderstorm. An air mass thunderstorm can be divided into uh, convective, orographic, and nocturnal uh, thunderstorms. Convective thunderstorm, uh, the lifting action is caused by heating 
from below. So during the daytime, you have areas that are hotter, that hot air rises up into the atmosphere, the air is unstable and forms thunderstorms. These are the most common type of thunderstorms that you're going to have on a, a, a day in uh, like a hot summer day. It's going to be convective thunderstorm. You can have an orographic thunderstorm. This is forms when the wind blows up a warm, moist, unstable air slope. So these are the kind of thunderstorms that you're going to see on the edge of mountains uh, and mountainous uh, terrain. Lastly, we can have nocturnal thunderstorms. So these thunderstorms are thunderstorms that occur at night. They are typically found in the central Midwest uh, Americas. They're associated with warm, moist air aloft. There are a number of hazards associated with thunderstorms and you pretty much need to know that there's going to be a lot of hazards and you also should know that thunderstorms will kill you. So even large jet aircraft do not fly through thunderstorms. They fly around them, they have a weather radar. Uh, actually, a, a gentleman that I learned to fly with many years ago, he ended up uh, dying in a, a Gulf Stream when they flew through the top end of a thunderstorm. So it is something that can get you. Uh, biggest hazards, you have turbulence and downdrafts. They can cause loss of control. Large thunderstorms, remember they have a lot of activity. And hail, you can see on the right side, the damage caused by hail. These airplanes are pretty much uh, write-offs now. You could also have very heavy precipitation, wet runways, as well as icing. It's a little diagram of uh, some of the hazards that you're going to find in a thunderstorm. So here we see the storm direction this way. Then you have these downdrafts from the uh, cumulonimbus clouds. So right here, you're going to end up with a gust front. Right here at the front, you're going to take off take off try to take off here and then as you fly here you're going to hit this downdraft underneath it's a downdraft and then decreasing performance wind shear going to get hail in here lightning and a lot of turbulence talk about squall lines a squall line is a line of thunderstorms that usually occur ahead of fast moving cold front thunderstorms they're they can be exceptionally severe and impenetrable by even large aircraft so if we look here, here's a, this big squall line. You do not want to go through it. And importantly here too, there's no, way, or there's no way through this. You can't pick your way through the odd cell. If you're flying up here, you're turning around, going here, all the way down here, and then back on the other side. That would be a big deviation. If we look here on the right, uh, this is the weather radar. There is just no way through this thunderstorm. Let's say we're flying this way. There's just no way through it. It's a solid line. You're going to have to make a big detour around here. Who knows if you're going to have enough fuel. You might have to stop for fuel somewhere, uh, or you might just end up turning around. Thunderstorms have three requirements. They require moisture, instability, and lifting action. There are three stages in of a thunderstorm. The cumulus stage, uh, characterized by updraft. The mature a uh, thunderstorm that is characterized by hail and maximum turbulence, and the dissipating stage characterized by downdrafts. We can have uh, six types of thunderstorms, frontal, air mass, nocturnal, squall line, or graphic, and convective. Although I guess you could argue that convective, or graphic, and nocturnal are all considered air mass thunderstorms. And thunderstorms unfortunately kill pilots on a regular basis. What is the predominant hazard of a dissipating thunderstorm? A, hail, B, icing, C, downdraft, D, updraft. So all of these are hazards of thunderstorms, but typically on a dissipating thunderstorm, it will be characterized by extensive downdrafts. Which of the following is not a risk of thunderstorms? A, hail, well, that is a risk of a thunderstorm. B, turbulence, definitely that's a risk. C, icing, yeah, you can get a lot of icing in thunderstorm. D, all of the above are risks of thunderstorms. So D is the correct answer. Which type of thunderstorm moves at the greatest speed? A, squall line, C, air mass, D, nocturnal. So we covered this in our lesson. Uh, remember, it is going to be a squall line thunderstorm ahead of a fast moving cold front. Which practice is most safe? A, clearing. Thunderstorms by a good margin. Uh, yeah, that's definitely correct. If you're in the vicinity of thunderstorms, you want to go around them by leave plenty of distance. 
Do you want to avoid flying up the anvil? Yep, make sure that the anvil can have a lot of downdrafts and hail, so we avoid that. C, ensuring that you're flying a properly equipped aircraft when in the vicinity of thunderstorms. So that's also correct. Do you want an aircraft with weather radar that will let you uh, see where these thunderstorms are located and go around them? So the correct answer is a D. All of the above are correct. That concludes this lesson on thunderstorms. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you in our next lesson.